Peggy 16. El universo está hecho de luz y oscuridad. Estas fuerzas ancestrales se encuentran en toda la materia y la energía, tanto en nuestro sistema solar como fuera de él. Pero no siempre hemos sabido eso. Cuando el viajero llegó a nuestro sistema solar, lo llamaron de muchas formas. Nave, planeta, Dios. Su presencia provocó e inspiró grandes cambios. Terraformó varias lunas y planetas. La esperanza de vida se multiplicó por tres. Y lanzamos naves colonia para crear mundos más allá del nuestro. Fue nuestra edad de oro. Pero como todas las edades de oro, estaba condenada a terminar. Un enemigo ancestral persiguió al viajero. Una voz en la oscuridad. Nos encontró. La humanidad lo perdió todo. Con su último aliento, el viajero hizo retroceder a su enemigo para crear algo nuevo. Los espectros. Entre las tinieblas que siguieron al colapso, los espectros eligieron a los primeros portaluces. Guerreros inmortales que recibieron el poder de la luz del viajero. La humanidad se enfrentó a muchas amenazas. Invasores de otros sistemas llegaron en tropel. Unos piratas, llamados caídos, vinieron a expoliar los restos de nuestra edad de oro. Los violentos cabal vinieron a por nuestro territorio y nuestros recursos a conquistarlos. La colmena formada por agresivos devotos de la muerte, llegó para saciar sus ansias de destrucción. Y los Vex, unas extrañas criaturas mecánicas, llegaron para someter nuestro mundo a su salvaje brutalidad. También luchamos entre nosotros. Durante un tiempo, reinó el caos. Sin embargo, al final nos unimos para reconstruir nuestro mundo, para curar nuestras heridas. Construimos una ciudad bajo la sombra del viajero. La última ciudad segura de la Tierra. En esa ciudad, toda la humanidad convivió en paz y armonía. Los humanos, habitantes originales de la Tierra. Los Exos prodigios de la Edad de Oro y los Insomnes, un pueblo tocado tanto por la luz como por la oscuridad. Los portaluces prometieron proteger la última ciudad. Con el paso de los siglos se ganaron el título de Guardianes. Los Titanes, todo un ejemplo de fuerza y valentía. Los hechiceros, eruditos de la magia y conocedores de las artes arcanas. Y los cazadores, audaces aventureros conocidos por su astucia. Los guardianes saben que son más fuertes cuando permanecen unidos. Ahora, nuevas amenazas usan nuestros poderes contra nosotros. La flota negra estrecha su cerco y nos empuja hacia un segundo colapso. Y nuestro mayor adversario, la voz de la oscuridad, se muestra como un ser de un poder inimaginable. El testigo. Pero no todo está perdido. Nuevos guardianes surgen cada día para cambiar el futuro en nuestro sistema solar. Y más allá.
uh, when I think about being a guardian, I think about being part of a fire team. Uh, for me specifically, I think about being a fire team leader. I think about not only being a fire team leader for my friends, but also for my family. So many of my friends trust me with their guardians. There you go. Very good. Very good. Oh. You just killed your dad. The teamwork that really pays off, especially after a long period of hard work, to come in clutch in the big moments. I've been able to pass along my love of destiny to so many friends, also to my family. Been able to game with my daughter. To be able to guide little lights is, is truly a treasure. But to me, the most important part of being a guardian is being kind to everyone that we meet. Your kindness and joy may spark hope in a darkness zone where light is fading away. most favorite memories with them so far is Valid Disciple Contest Mode. It's my very first time even doing day one raid. And uh, it was, we didn't get it, but it was a good time. Um, yeah, through, through my clan, they've helped me become a better person, a more confident person, a more confident player. And I wouldn't be the same without them. Destiny ha sido una increíble experiencia y me ha ayudado a escapar de mi realidad. Acá muchos me conocen por mi apodo, Deus. Y gracias a este personaje he sido capaz de hacer incontables amigos, vivir experiencias inolvidables y atesorar también momentos dentro de la comunidad. Para mí el juego es más que simplemente lo que se ve en pantalla. Han sido las personas, las actividades, los hitos como jugador incluso, y la experiencia y todo este sueño y e historia que hemos construido en el que hay un desarrollo de personaje.
Hi, my name is Lillian. I go by Lily Bean Cosplay on Instagram, and I've been doing Destiny cosplay for six years. I started playing Destiny in late 2015, and I just fell in love with the designs, the characters in the game, and I went to a local convention dressed as my hunter. From then, I kind of just wanted to keep going. I did a House of Winter Fallen Drag, a sweeper bot, Soraya Hawthorne, Anna Bray, my hunter character from Destiny 2. It always has to do with a character that I'm drawn to in some way from a design standpoint. If it's a character that has a bunch of LEDs or you know, moving arms or something, I look at it and say, how can I make this? Because I want to learn from it. I want to diversify my skill set with my Spires Associate costume. That's like a fully immersive costume. I can't see my face, I'm wearing a helmet, and I have two extra arms. Savathun was part of the Cosplay Cosmodrome event that Bungie did for Bungie Day. And being able to take a character whose design I wasn't super familiar with yet and create it in real life and then wear it, it was great. <laughs> There's so many different groups within the Destiny community. You have artists, you have musicians, streamers, gamers, and I think that's really special just to be able to show, like, this is what inspires me and this is what I'm gonna do to show that it inspires me. I'm Dan, a.k.a. the Rat King's crew. I've been playing Bungie games since Marathon 2, and I've been playing Destiny since it launched. I'm so happy to be part of such a creative and passionate community, and I can't wait to see what Destiny is going to do next. For somebody who's played from D1 to D2, what makes a guardian is someone who, against all odds, keeps pushing forward, always making the advance, always moving forward. I was introduced to the game by a bunch of friends, uh, military law enforcement. Uh, I'm in the public safety field. Don't have a lot of time to play, but when I play, play hard. Uh, long story short, a lot of those folks either got deployed, 
uh, went to other jobs or just didn't really see them anymore. Complained about the content and not having it vast. I've learned from D1 to D2, the game has definitely grown. And me as a diehard guardian, I keep pushing forward because I have the confidence and the ability to see what's happening. And now here we are still playing. I'm Steve Saylor, aka Blind Gamer Steve. I'm a content creator and accessibility advocate and consultant in the video game industry. My name is T, T Morris. Uh, people call me T, they call me T Monster. I also go by Twitch Dad. <laughs> When I started uh, looking into wanting to stream, I had known this dude here for about, like, I think about 10 years at that point. And so I reached out to him. I was like, hey, you know what? I know you play Destiny. W like, would you be cool kind of uh, helping me and guiding me through, through the game? I've never played it before. This is when I gave you a, a little bit of honesty. I said, are you sure you want me because <laughs> <laughs> you, you see me play, so you know how bad my aim is. It'll be the blind leading the blind. And, and he went, that's, oh, that's what we'll call it. All right, there's the traveler. There's the traveler Ooh. in front of us. Let's go. Walk forward. Walk forward. I want you to enjoy this. As someone who has a disability where it affects my vision and it is hard for me to be able to play games in general, having someone take the time and guide me through being able to play a game and, and not try to rush me through things, that meant the world to me. There's that. All right. Oh, there, there he is. Yes! Yes! Oh, yes! In any other game, it's usually people don't want to play with a disabled person, whereas with Destiny, I can jump in with T, I can jump in with, with my friends, and even when we just jump in with random blueberries in, in, in the community, we can still be able to help each other out, and that's why I love Destiny. Did you shoot my friend? That was a bad choice. It's all about being able to reach out and pick someone up and being like, we can do this together. And that is being a hero. It's being able to lift everyone else up. It's not about you. It's about the fire team. That's what makes a good guardian, is when it's about reaching the end goal and reaching it together.
Hello, Guardians. I hope you are all doing well. Happy Bungie Day. Here's my idea of me being a Guardian in Destiny. I started playing Destiny in Destiny when, when the game first came out. I was a Hunter main back then. Now I'm a proud Titan main. My favorite moments of Destiny will be my first ever raid that I've covered an LFG group and the friends and clan mates that I met and played with to this day. I'm Gray or Gamer Girl Gray. I am an Indian American content creator and community builder on Twitch with the motto Gaming for a Greater Good. I started my gaming journey in 2014 when two of my best friends gifted me my first Xbox. And I distinctly remember finding Destiny and staying up the entire night to play the game. No, get me out, let me out, let me out, let me out, let me out. I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm not dead yet. I found a place where I could be myself without any fear of being treated differently for who I was, how I looked, how I sounded. No, 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 you gotta be kidding me, bro. When I came out to my community, it was such a monumental feeling for me to be able to see all these people flock together to make me feel welcome and safe and included. That was a feeling that I want to share with other people, this safe space. The charities are honestly a very big part of my stream because I see my content as a means to an end to fight for what's good in the world. No, God, please help me. No, oh. Building a happy corner of the internet is just about being able to lift people up in the few hours that they spend with me, creating something that people feel comfortable in. They feel like they can be their authentic selves in. This game and this community constantly reminds me that we're not guardians just in name. We truly are bearers of light.
being a guardian to me has shown me how important it is to stand up for what's right and to defend those who are oppressed and marginalized, just like Bungie continues to do every single day. So thank you, Bungie, for being real life guardians to me and everyone else across the world. The way that you stand up for social justice issues and make sure that everyone in your circle is loved and cared for is truly inspiring. I know that it dictates the way that I live my life on a day-to-day basis. Thank you so much, and eyes up, Guardians. My name is Xavier, but you guys probably know me as Solar Flare. I make 3D animated skits based off of content in the Destiny universe. Prepare to return to being a god-killing, time-breaking, paracausal space cowboy. At first I created content that I thought was creative, stuff you hadn't seen before, things that would be funny situations, but I didn't know how to produce them. One of my friends suggested to me this program called Blender, and so I tried to learn it myself. I taught myself, I made a video. Solar Flare was the main character, and it went from just being the channel name to being the name of sort of who I am at this point. Okay guys, we have to be careful. Someone here is possessed by an owl. Who? That's the thing, we don't... Usually, it's around 2 a.m. when I'm trying to go to sleep, my brain says, hey, it would be really cool if we went to sleep. But instead, what if we thought about a new video to create? <laughs> hey, Bobby! Hey, Steven! The future for solar, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm working on a script and a whole plot, a series of, of videos. I'm really excited to create an actual cohesive storyline. So, turns out, Aldrin's sister was actually an evil possessed meatball that was controlled by a magical space dragon that was actually controlled by a hive queen. The Destiny community feels like a group of friends that you may not live in the same area, but every time you go back, it's like you never left. When you get to know the people that you're spending your time with, not only does it make every moment with them more valuable, but also you might find yourself going to one of their weddings five years from now just because you decided to send them a friend request after they danced with you in a Crucible match. Are you really going to tell me that looks more like the letter V than the size of pizza? He ate pepperoni! It blows me away just how dedicated people are to creating things in this community. It's just, it's just so cool to see how passionate people are about all of it.
here's a guy, Sarah's Universe, who's been in the Destiny community for like eight years running, probably considered now a Maria, considered a veteran. And the fact that, you know, back in you know, July 2014, I was curious about the game. I was curious about it and you know, very interested to see what this game, you know, whether this is the game for me. And then to to get you know, get to a point where I would, you know, get so many dungeon clears, raid clears, go you know, flawless to the point where I even solo flawless trials. That was two two or so weeks ago. And then to meet friends like Vixen, Tony, Lovely Low Live. So and then to be a mod for Miss Keller, because she's awesome. Um to to have all of that in like eight years, I wouldn't even believe you back then, but here we are. Still living the Guardian life. Amen. Hey, soy Colossus. Desde mis inicios como guardián hace ya 7 años, jamás creí que llegaría tan lejos. He puesto fin a incontables amenazas y he conseguido las armas más exóticas. También he explorado el sistema solar durante años en busca de las respuestas más enigmáticas. Y aunque las encontrara, seguía faltándome algo. Hasta que lo encontré. ¿Sabéis qué forja verdaderamente a un guardián? Los compañeros que están a tu lado en cada aventura. Ya sea tu escuadra o tu clan, ser guardián va más allá de uno mismo. Yo junto a mi clan he hecho de todo, desde partidas privadas que acaban en carcajadas, hasta culminar una incursión en su modo 24 horas. Si no fuera por ellos, yo no estaría aquí. Es por eso que mi mejor momento en Destiny fue encontrar a mi clan, ya que, a partir de ahí, mi destino tuvo sentido.
to say one of my biggest memories about playing Destiny happens to be the raids and a lot of the friends that I made that I've made along the way. Vogue is my favorite raid, and when it came out, I was ecstatic. Uh, again, happy Bungie Day to everybody, and hope everyone's having a great one, and I'll see you in the stars. Hey everybody, I'm Tej, and I'm a guardian. What makes me feel most like a guardian is being able to be me. We all choose to represent ourselves in different ways, and when you learn about someone's guardian and the legend that they've written for themselves, it teaches you something beautiful about them. I strive to create a space online through content creation that people can just come as they are, and we can all just celebrate in this beautiful world that Bungie's created for us. There's something really amazing about being able to connect with people through a shared interest without the fear or anxiety that comes with thinking that you have to be something you're not, or thinking that you have to conform to a certain ideal or worldview in order to be respected or loved. So I hope that on this Bungie Day, we all can remember what it means to be a guardian. We all can remember to rally around each other, to show the love, spread the good vibes, and push back the darkness. I'll see you out there.
where you rescue heroes from other timelines and brawl worm gods with your bare hands. It's a battle of light versus dark, monsters versus metal, everyone versus Telesto in a lore-rich universe with an abundance of adventure and exploring. But that's not just why we play, is it? Believe me, nightmare hunts give me quite the adrenaline rush, but my Twitter mention suggests you expect more. So did you keep playing for the life-changing god rolls? Or the mile high sparrow flying? The Nessus frogs? The day one raid nights with your friends where you spend 8 hours and still don't know what you're doing? The Nessus frogs? You must have had some inspiration, right? Probably the creators and streamers that helped you forget that time you dropped your pizza, cheese side down. Or was it the people creating a destiny universe of their own with stories, art, and literally dressing for the job they want? Maybe you're here for the intellectual discussion, or maybe you're here for the space horse. Maybe you're here for the destiny creators you love so much, Bungie actually got one to do this video. Hi, Mom and Dad. What I'm trying to say is, Destiny 2 is so much more than the game we see in trailers. While many joined for the fantasy, we found a home amongst its people. And in the end game, we stayed for the discos, the DPS, the grenades, the bad bubbles, burgers, and tannics behind every corner. Trombone medleys, laser tag, tower names, yeehaws, the dings, the funs, the clutcher kicks, sweeper bots, stasis crystals, cheese spots, raid callouts, pub song, ramen, sliding, chicken petting, galahorn, sepix prime, shiny swords, tight. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we are so excited to dive in and talk about just the kind of journey of being a massive Destiny and Bungie fan and what that's like to go from massive fan to actually working at the company that we loved so much. I want to learn about your, your journeys. How did you get started playing as a player, not as somebody who works here, playing Destiny and, and kind of how has that relationship with the game evolved through the years? Yeah. You know what, T, you and I, we've had many conversations, <laughs> work <laughs> session. Yeah. I want to hear from you, buddy. Uh, so I've been playing the game for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, as, as proof of my, uh, you know, you, the D1 Alpha Veteran status, I have my raid belt here today. Uh, so uh, this is this is my cringe moment yeah, where I will be it's proud. It's nice to see one in person. I've it's only seen, seen it on, one. like, screens and, like, screenshots. Well, tell, tell us so. a little bit about it. Like, how'd you get it? When'd you get it? Oh, so uh, that, is, <laughs> that is the King's Fall World's first belt. Uh, me and my five friends, we asked, uh, I, I say used to have, but I, I think we probably still have it. Uh, world's first of fun. Like whenever we were doing world's first races, it was supposed to be about having fun and showing off the new stuff. Uh, and for me, I always loved rating just because like I'm a problem solver by heart. Like that's also why I love working here because that's what I do is I just kind of solve problems that are really complicated. Yeah. That's really exhilarating. And now it's very fun uh, <laughs> being able to watch others suffer for 24 hours. Oh yeah! Uh, oh yeah! Because it's a, it is exhausting. Uh, so if you if you are if you are listening to this and you are and you are rating or if you're planning on rating for a long time, uh, drink water, stretch, <laughs> bathroom break, don't please. die, yeah. bathroom please. Breaks. please. Bathroom Thank you. Breaks. <laughs> yeah. Don't let that heart rate get too. Old. I'm very much with Sam on on this in terms of like the loving the problem solving and loving to get into that. I f really fell in love with Destiny when I started rating, and that was like my moment where I was like. I grew up playing puzzle games and mystery games, and like I love those types of games. And to find that in Destiny, and to find that same sort of like problem solving, but to do it with a team and to do it with your friends. Right. I'm on the same page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm totally on the same page. <laughs> like the the number one story for me around that is definitely Deepstone. Deepstone, oh, like I played game. all the way through so Deepstone good. with my clan, which was amazing. When you look back at the history of Destiny, there's so many moments like that, and I'm kind of I'm kind of interested on is there any characters or story moments that really stick out to you from our history? I feel like that's Destiny at its best is like yeah. when you are learning from it. Yes. Like at least for me, I feel like the journey of Eris yes. from like D1 and being like, who are you? What are you yeah. doing here? <laughs> this is weird, <laughs> like, chick. Yeah, it's yeah. like <laughs> super <laughs> creepy, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, but I, I think like seeing where she is now and then how she's like really helped everyone else like a lot of people i'm a huge Zavala fan i'm a titan it's just like in my yeah, blood <laughs> so like for me like seeing eris like help all of these different characters seeing zavala come from where he is which a lot of people again like, I, I know some folks that don't really like him that much but to me he always just seemed like a a really you know a father figure who's trying his best for everyone 
uh, you know, when Cade died, right? I think like, you know, people were like, what? Like Zavala, why aren't you doing this? X, Y, Z. Uh, and then we got to learn more about him. So for me, Zavala is like number one, that, like that his whole character arc and then Eris and like her character arc, you're all insufferable to then like teaching everybody how to deal with their demons. Yeah. I think it's Lots of narrative kind of crazy. Incredible. Speaking to now and like through season 17, how Eris, she's like one of the epitomes of grief in her whole story and how she evolved to something where she's like, I had to learn how to deal with grief on my own. Mm -hmm. And to see her evolve to a character that is like helping people go through their own grief. It's, Bungie, what the heck? Like, how do you do and this? And how like, patient she was. Like the fact that like when Crow would stumble or Zavala would stumble, she'd be like, come, take a yeah. step back. Patience, healing doesn't happen overnight. And Exactly. I think what we've seen in the last couple of seasons of, of the incredible narrative team and, and just diving deeper into all of the characters, I think that's one of my favorite things that we've we've seen from the kind of expansion from where we started to where we're, we're at now is just that deeper dive. And I know kind of where we're going with things and just like the more that we're going to be able to dive into and, and hear characters' backstories and understand where they're coming from and what makes them, I think to everyone's point, it, it just makes it more than just a shooter game, you have that additional aspect of these incredible stories that we all connect with in different ways. And it just makes it, it's its the bungee magic, it's the space magic, it's the thing that like... That then you do a little emote jig at the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it all somehow, and it and it all all makes sense. It's called Glimmer Guns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, how cool is it like that we're here now? And I'm, I'm kind of interested, like knowing your your long relationship with this game before you even worked here, and then that we're sitting on this couch, getting to nerd out and talk about the things that we love the most. How has that been making that transition? What was that inspiration that drove you to be like, you know what? I'm gonna put my application in. We'll see what happens. Oh, this is my first gaming studio for sure. Yeah. It's a getting into Bungie is interesting because I always wanted to be in tech. That's really where I started. For Destiny specifically, I played it every day, but I never really thought of it as a place to work um, until Black at Bungie. Uh, and so I reached out to a bunch of people on LinkedIn and was asking a bunch of questions. I was like, hey, look, look, look. So it was really amazing to be able to like get into the industry and get into Bungie. Destiny for me was, uh, that was back when I was streaming for fun. It was just a hobby, but then it became just a lot more to me because it has all these things I love about games. Cause I love RPGs and I love, you know, like the the game feel of a bunchy game, right? When like you, you you shoot that gun for the first time and it just feels good, you know. Space magic. Space yeah, magic. space magic. Space magic. <laughs> like, and I and I always play the wizard, so I played the warlock. <laughs> um, you know, because I, I, that's all I want to do. I just want to cast space magic in in every game that I play. So to me, the game's a lot. Like it's kind of just it gave me a career. Uh, it gave me like guidance in life for finding a community that I really love. Um, and how I'm absurdly uh, thankful that I can be a part of the team and hopefully make the game better to hopefully have that kind of impact on somebody else. I knew that I wanted to work in gaming. I actually got the opportunity, not from the Bungie career website, but from a Twitter post um, from... Tweet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a Twitter post. And I immediately <laughs> sent a message and connected and I was like, I want to talk about these marketing opportunities. And now I'm and here. Now you're here. <laughs> you're here. You love to see it. So in it's ever in just even now, just the fact that I'm sitting here, I'm just like You shot your shot, oh dude. That's gosh. what life's about. Literally, I shot mm -hmm. my you shot. shot like, your I'm shot? like, this is what they mean because you hear them throw that phrase around and you're just like, but what does it actually mean to shoot mm -hmm. your shot? And it's like, no, it's like you're not going to respond on Twitter. It's like, I'm gonna find you yeah. in other places. Even if you you're have those gonna moments give me of doubt. Chance. Even if you have that moment of fear, because sometimes to make a jump like that's scary. That's mm -hmm. scary. If you're scared, Absolutely. do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. The leap into to Bungie was really similar to, to Will's story. This is my first role in gaming. So it was this like huge mm -hmm. leap to I had been working in marketing for for a long time, but my really wanted to make the switch to something that I'm really passionate about and something that I love, because I think that's what makes work so magical is when you get to work on something you really care about and you really, really love and you feel passionate about. So that for me was the kind of thing that pushed me towards shooting my shot and taking my shot a couple years ago and and, and making the switch over to, to Bungie. And it's it's been incredible. There's moments like this where it feels very surreal. Right? Where you're like, what is happening? This is very, very, just like to have that like, we all work at Bungie now. Like we get to contribute to that thing that we all love so much and that's incredible.
I'm sorry, but that's a, such a good point because there's so many people that ask us like advice on how to get in. Mm -hmm. And I was rejected numerous times before finally getting that spot. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I know it breaks my heart because so many other people are in that same position yep. and then they stop and they stop chasing that dream. Cause like, this isn't my first gaming job. I, I have, I've been working in this industry for almost 20 years and as a journalist, and it was really scary to make that jump. I, I just, I felt like it was right. I, I kept applying for narrative and, you know, granted I sent them not appropriate fan fiction as writing samples. So I get it. Like, no hard feelings. I get it. Uh, and they were like, you know, it was It was just, they were like, hey, we think you'd be a good fit for community. Like, let's put you through that interview process. And, and we did mm -hmm. that. And, and it was scary at first, but the more I kept interviewing, I was like, wait, no, this is, this was made for me. Like, this is what I was supposed to do. And it was funny because all of that trepidation that first week left mm -hmm. because I, I felt like, it was family. I'd like to think that Bungie gives space for that human condition, that human element. It's a place where I can feel like I can be myself. It's a place where I am uh, being taken care of. And I'd like to think that, you know, we're not perfect and there's things we can improve upon, but we try to talk about those things. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. It was honestly so much fun just diving into your stories a little bit, not just like as devs and working on Bungie's side, but as players before that and the journey into that. I'm really also excited for the upcoming showcase. So I'm going to need you all to meet me, Matt, in the back. We're going to do a blanket yes. burrito and we're going to hunker down with some popcorn. Okay? <laughs> Let's go. Deal. Let's go. I'm ready. Right I'm excited. Blanket burrito, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> blanket burrito. All right. Comfort. We're Let's both comfort it. here at Bunch. <laughs> Hola, viejo amigo. Oh! What? They're like corrupted gold. No! Are they using supers? That's all I want in Destiny. I want darkness. I just got chills. This is everything I've ever wanted out of the story. Multiple G-Ports. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Boom! Dang. Growth is nasty, son. Tu vida es mia. No! Woo! The Leviathan is back. A scythe? A freaking scythe! Donde esta Karu? Se ha sometido a la voluntad del testigo. Yay! That was hot. Sir, are you okay? Oh, shit, you look nasty. <laughs> what the freak? Is that the witness? Man, that's crazy! Welcome, Guardians. So awesome to be here with you again. Last time we got up here, we got a chance to show you Savathun, the Witch Queen, and her majestic throne world. Since then, it's been a wild year for Destiny. You returned to the original loot cave to reclaim the fabled Galarhorn. Then, you exercised an ancient evil from a Hive Queen, so you could put it inside a grenade launcher. <laughs> and now, You've been spending the past few weeks cleansing a derelict leviathan from its twisted nightmares. In fact, the last year has been the best year we've ever had in the Destiny community. I hope you can feel it as well. And seeing this kind of reaction from our community, it's both humbling and inspiring. Because our team here at Bungie, we're not just developers, we're also guardians. We're trying to build what we'd love to play in Destiny, and that's what brought each one of us here. It brought us not only to Bungie, but also brought all of us to this final showdown between light and darkness. So, without further ado, this is the beginning of the end. This is Lightfall. Vean este glorioso final. Vendrán a por nosotros. Para saborear hasta la última gota de esa lucha estéril. 
regresa a su esencia. Que vengan y observen. Nuestra verdadera forma. Lo que hagan entonces... Sin las cadenas de la esperanza... Determinará quiénes son. Porque solo cuando llegue el final... Seremos libres. I've seen that thing a hundred times now, and every time <laughs> I see it, I still kind of get goosebumps. Instantly, I had chills. It's all here. It's all happening now. Things are finally coming to a head. Thematically, we, we really have been honing in on that kind of bombastic, big set piece approach. It's going to be over the top action, adrenaline pumping, like the whole time. This is really kicking off the conclusion to the Light and Dark Saga, where we finally face down this foe that we've been anticipating facing for so long. It's pushing it to 11. We've been hinting at this malicious force in the darkness that's been our enemy behind a lot of our conflicts. We revealed that enemy, we put a name on it and put a face on it, and that enemy is the witness. And the witness is coming with its newly empowered disciple, Callus. Callus is really crash landing with a new and more powerful army than ever before. They've got new powers, they've got new armor, they've got tormentors to join their ranks that are going to be bigger and better enemies than we've ever faced. Callus is taking that army that he's bringing with him to be the harbinger of the Witness's doom. This is such a pivotal moment for Destiny. Everyone is coming to have a last stand with Callus and the Witness to really avoid the next collapse, something that we've been trying to avoid ever since Destiny 1. We see in the trailer that we're headed to Neptune, and on Neptune there's been this hidden city called Neomuna where an alternate version of humanity has been blooming since the collapse. Neomuna is the capital city of Neptune. It's a giant metropolis that we were completely unaware existed until now. What's interesting and exciting to me about this place is that it's pristine, it's new. It's not like a lot of the places that we've explored previously in Destiny. Exploring that space is very, very cool. There's so much new stuff to discover in Neomuna and in Neptune. And also I saw some new characters there. I'm really excited to get to know Cloud Striders and their story. Cloud Striders can be compared to Guardians. They're both protectors of a civilization that's potentially under threat. But Guardians were chosen It's their duty to protect humanity. Cloud Striders have chosen to protect their people. There's like an awesome opportunity for the Guardians to learn from the Cloud Striders and their way of living and their philosophy of life. So we've got the newness of that city, the newness of the Cloud Striders that we've never been aware of. And then, of course, you get a glimpse of this green energy. <laughs> I wonder what that is. Strand is the new darkness power that we discover here. Something that's unique about Strand, unlike any of these other powers we've ever had before, when you play through Lightfall, you are discovering this power for the first time. No one in the universe ever in the history of Destiny has used Strand before. This is the Guardian discovering darkness on their own and learning how to shape it and manipulate it and use it against Kallus and his forces and, you know, have fun in the new urban environment of, of Neomuna. You are really going to have to prepare yourself for a wild ride. We just got a glimpse of our new destination, Neomuna, our new foe. Callus and the Shadow Legion paired with the Witness and a very brief glimpse at Strand, but that's just barely scratching the surface of what this release has to offer. Right, like what, what we've just seen in that trailer is just the tip of the iceberg, and we've got a whole lot more we're excited to show you coming up. 
Last year, we wanted to return to our studio's roots in creating some of the best shooter campaigns in the industry. That's been our legacy since Halo, and we tried to push that front and center in The Witch Queen. And it's about more than just guns, but creating an adventure in a handcrafted world full of surprises. Then, we added the legendary campaign option, because great combat needs to challenge you to test your thumb skill, your tactics, and your build crafting. And we heard loud and clear that you want more of that. In fact, two out of every three players that completed the Witch Queen campaign did it on Legendary. You tested yourself against the Witch Queen in her Loosen Hive and rose to that challenge. And then you let us know it was one of the best shooter experiences that we've ever made. So with Lightfall, we want to push that even further. We want to give you the best Bungie action experience that we can create with the brand new Lightfall campaign. Lightfall is going to change the way that our players move, fight, and explore everywhere in Destiny. Neptune is this fantastic destination. The capital city of Neomuna is a really fun place to explore, and it's this bright neon metropolis. There's a harbor, office buildings, an arcade. This is a city that we've made, and using Strand to traverse through it and explore it, it's going to be so exciting. There's some places that once you whip out that grappling hook, ooh, you're gonna be able to explore and get to places that you couldn't before. Look at that up there. I wonder if I can grapple to there. I'm gonna be a kid in a candy store. It's not a city that is collapsed. It is a city that has lived through the collapse. Neptune now has to deal with the cloak being pulled back and then being revealed to the world at our now central of the conflict. Callus has taken his capital ship and just like planted it right down in part of the city and it's cabal occupied territory. It's a city under siege. You've got this infiltrator vibe at times where you feel like a tactical team going into a skyscraper. You're dealing with cabal roadblocks and patrols all throughout the city. The Shadow Legion, they provide that like characteristic cabal brute strength. They're all about like volatility and power. And they've been enhanced now by pyramid technology. They have these suppression devices that can take away some of your super, or take away some of your abilities. And then they fight alongside these terrifying new pyramid units called Tormentors. As part of his discipleship to the Witness, Callus has been upgraded. And so the Tormentors that they've brought in are these impossibly huge, unstoppable behemoths. They wield scythes, they can attack from a distance, they can bring you in close, they can drain your very life force from you. They are basically embodiments of terror. It's like a boss character within the battlefield. Your stomach drops. You're like, okay, I'm playing through, I'm having fun, I'm popping heads, doing this thing, and then boom, there it is. We've got all the new stuff going into the game, Strand, Tormentors, Shadow Legion, a cool new environment. These are all a great setting for a new legendary campaign, and we're still making sure that we go through and we tweak and tune and we balance the encounters to have that right challenging level of difficulty for players. The legendary campaign was a huge hit coming out of the Witch Queen. It was the first time we had done that sort of elected difficulty where you could really test your skill and test your power. And so we're gonna bring that back for Lightfall. Of course, you're still gonna have that higher reward tier, and we still wanna make sure that you get that inside track towards being raid ready. Everyone back in the studio is so hard at work on Lightfall, putting in the details and making this whole release come alive and continue to surprise and delight players. I am so excited to get this out. Lightfall is unlike anything players have seen before in Destiny, and it's another step that sends you hurtling to the conclusion of the Light and Dark Saga. Come on, amazing. I'm super excited to dive into Strand and talk about all the new stuff that we just saw. Strand, like Stasis, is a power from the darkness. Unlike our light abilities, which are all about creation, darkness is more about consciousness. Strand is psychic energy that forms this extra dimension, this sort of matrix that connects everything together, connects all living beings and all minds. And you, the Guardian, are sort of gaining the knowledge and gaining the power to peer into this 
alternate psychic universe and begin to pull at these threads and tug at these wires that are connecting all these living beings. When guardians learn how to use Strand, it's almost like this third eye opens up. It's about peeling back the curtain of reality, taking those connections and then weaving them into new objects. Yeah, and it's pretty cool to see them come together. Like, it's always been there. And now that we can tap into it, we can use it for our benefit, whether it's through movement or through damage. Strand has a grappling hook. Since you're seeing into this cosmic web, you are able to grapple at any point because the cosmic web exists everywhere. Even if there's not an object there, it will hook on to that web and pull you forward. It's just taking that idea to the next level, yeah. putting that, uh, that the destiny, destiny spin, spin on it. Yep. The grappling hook initially started as part of the hunter's kit, right? They're all about fluid movement, rapidly traversing space and being very agile. But as we were developing, it's like, oh man, it's, this feels like it's too much fun to, to just keep it to one class, right? So we made the call to expand the super cool new ability across all three classes. On the design side, we wanted to come up with how each of the classes interpreted this additional psychic dimension, like in their own way, right? So the Warlock, they're the telekinetic master of Strand. So they're gonna be able to telepathically reach into the Strand dimension, pull matter out, and weave it into this big barrage of these Strand missiles. Wherever they land, these missiles are actually going to unravel, sort of reweave themselves into a new form. With the Titan, you're able to weave these claws and do an area of damage around you, spinning and slashing. The super I think I'm most excited for is the Hunter Rope Dart Super. The Hunter does a flip and weaves these strands into this rope dart and is swinging it as they're kind of moving around. The first time I saw that, even in its kind of like rough state, it just blew my mind. We've learned a lot from creating our other subclasses, and we've taken those learnings about combat, about movement, about build crafting. We put that all into Strand, and I'm so excited to see where players take it once it's out there in the wild. Destiny is a game that gets even better when you play with your friends. We want to create communities that are welcoming, inclusive, and they'll let you bring your old friends and make new ones. And since last year, over 5 million new Guardians have joined our ranks. We believe that there are still millions more of your friends that would love to play Destiny with you. And the things that you want to see us improve in Destiny are also exactly what's going to make it easier to convince your friends to come and check out the game. It should be easier to create custom, incredible builds. Easier to find people to play with. Easier to swap from being that boss-melting, storm-chaser-wielding, falling star juggernaut right into that ultimate yee-hawing, dead man's tail shooting, Titan's rampart crutching sentinel. And if none of what Joe just said makes sense to you, we want to fix that too. Because it's not about removing the depth that makes Destiny so great. It's instead about allowing everyone to dive deeper with ease. The changes we're making to make Destiny easier to come into, changes to how you build your characters, changes to how you see what there is to do and what there is to accomplish. And in the year ahead, we're actually making it easier to form groups in Destiny so you can go and do some of the greatest content that Destiny has to offer. All the teams are working together to build this experience, and so that's what's really exciting. We keep on hearing from players like, hey, unless I have a friend to play with, I don't know what to do. And so what we're trying to give them is like, hey, here's a path to follow. Guardian ranks are this, like, this basically like a knowledge ladder. We actually progress you through 11 ranks, and it's really like heavily focusing on like exposing players to all the systems of Destiny. At some point, the story about you as a Guardian involves other Guardians and what they think about you. 
that is just a whole new dimension of your journey through destiny that we've never really explored before. When you show up in the tower and you see that person who's at one of the highest ranks, you're gonna know that you're looking at a player who's actually really demonstrated mastery of many of the different activities in destiny, not just from our perspective, but from the perspective of other players. Some of the higher guardian ranks will actually be asking for you to step up, to actually rise to the occasion and prove to other guardians that you are a strong player and a strong leader. A lot of people have groups that they already play with, but this will really provide people the opportunity to be recognized for helping other people learn the game, but also provide more people to play with on a regular basis. In the year of Lightfall, we're going to actually be investing in building a looking for group system in Destiny itself. You'll be able to look for other players, you'll be able to find groups that are looking for players. I'm so excited about being able to form groups in the next coming year because it can be really hard to get through some of the hard content solo and making it so much easier to find people to play with is just going to make getting into Destiny and doing the awesome content so much easier. Yeah, and They'll be able to say, this is a player who I can trust to lead me through the new raid. I want to join their group. Or they can say, these are players who are new to the activity. I want to take them for that first raid because that'll be a great experience for them and a valuable experience for me as a leader. It's really going to help players come together and understand each other better when they've never met before. It's going to make the game so much more social and I think that it's going to really make Destiny players feel like they're on one team. So commendations is a feature that you'll experience towards the end of an activity. So you end the activity now and you get to see the screen that has all the people you played with. You can click on one of the guardians and choose what experience you had with them. So like, were they a good team player? Were they fun to play with? There's no better way to actually show how good a person is as a teammate or as a leader than to have other players say, this person's a great teammate, this person's a great leader. It's really a system that's designed to let players show appreciation for each other. Also using the commendation system, people are going to be able to say like, hey, this person as a good leader and, and looking at the guardian rank system, they have a lot of experience. It's gonna be, oh, that's the person I want to help me get through this hard content that I've been struggling with. Social games like Destiny give you an opportunity to like really connect with other people and do things together and get to know each other. And with a system like LFG, you're making it so that more people can get that experience started than ever before. Both the loadout screen and the mod manager are completely new features. The mod manager is meant to make build construction destiny a lot easier. We all love our fashion game. Fashion game's amazing. And so we're gonna take what we did for the fashion game and we're bringing it to the build craft game. There's gonna be one screen where you can go to and do your entire loadout for your character. It's gonna be amazing. So you'll be able to save the build that you've put together as a loadout and then switch between those things as you're going from activity to activity. Yeah, I feel like with the new release Destiny and the accommodation system mixed with Guardian Ranks, we're giving players even new aspirations. It isn't going to be just about power level. It won't just be about gear. It's also going to be about that Guardian Rank. It's going to be about those commendations. It's all the ways that we're bringing players together. So today, we are also launching a brand new season of Destiny 2. And as we've evolved our seasons over the years, we've learned a lot. And I think we've been able to deliver some amazing character moments and events for the community. We're long past the era of content droughts. Instead, there are exciting story and events happening in Destiny almost every week, year round. And we're not slowing down. Each season, we want to keep raising the bar for narrative experiences in any live game. We want to keep pushing to create unexpected adventures that'll make every season of Destiny unique. And we want to keep listening and learning from you, the Destiny community, so that we can create the strongest seasons of any live service. Because the witness is coming. And if we want to survive, we need a crew. We need to enrich our defenses. If you're feeling surly, maybe even loot our enemies. We may even need to find a captain to join us on our next adventure in the season of plunder. The army says liberty. The 
Las antiguas tripulaciones ahora están bajo su mando. He leído sobre ellas. Los... ¿Cuál es la palabra humana? Piratas. La vanguardia debería reagruparse para luchar. Bueno, le va dan clase. Demuéstrales a esos piratas lo que pasa cuando hacen enfadar a la araña. Espero que tengas munición. Es hora de volar por los aires esta barcaza desvencijada. la mercancía. Perdona, me he dejado llevar por la emoción de la aventura. What are you most excited about for Season of Plunder? Pirates. <laughs> This season we said, what if we just go to the stars and dig up buried treasure? We are unearthing a lot of mysteries and secrets. We're swashbuckling onto enemy spaceships. And then we're also learning a lot of things about some of our favorite characters. We're going to have an adventure this season. Season of Plunder kicks off with Aramis being freed from her icy prison. She's collected old fallen crews of pirates and rogue cabal together in order to hunt down mysterious relics and treasures. It's time to meet your end. So guardians are tasked with stopping Aramis from collecting these relics. And in order to do that, you have to create your own crew of shady dealers and backroom brokers. Drifter, Mithrax, Ido, and Spider are going to be helping you. Anchors away. Ready when you are, Captain. That's the beginning of Season of Plunder. What you're going to be doing is forming a pirate crew of your own. You're going to fill it with different crew members that you can recruit over the course of the season. Drifter is going to toss you the keys to your personal catch. Then you're just going to set out into the stars and do cool pirate stuff. I'm so excited. <laughs> This season, we have multiple brand new activities coming that will really give you a sense of being on a pirate adventure. One of the mainstays of this season is a new six-player offensive called Catch Crash. When I saw the concept for the catch with the big mainsails on it, I just said, oh my god, this is going to be a fun season. Just like seeing Catch Crash through the different iterations, like fighting on the deck of the ship. You get to become your own ammunition and launch yourself from a cannon to the other ship, and you are the weapon, so <laughs> you're gonna go mess them up. The second big activity we have coming this season is called Expedition. You're gonna be guiding a massive drill that's looking for this buried, hidden pirate treasure, and you're gonna have to be fending off of all these pirate crews trying to protect their hordes. And then our final new activity coming this season is what we're calling Pirate Hideouts. We have so many like different little maps that you can piece together fragments of this season, and they lead you to the lair of the Pirate Lord, right? Their hideout. These are their, their caves where they're hoarding all of their amazing treasures and their mysterious relics. These relics are mysterious objects of dark power, and they're all over the system. We don't know exactly what it is they do yet, but if Aramis is trying to collect them, it's nothing good. Taking the opportunity to line the Arc 3.0 update with the Fallen, it just went up working out perfectly because you've got all the simple Arc weaponry and the Arc shielded captains. It feels right with that release, almost like we planned it. Arc is a damage type that's about proximity, right? It's about going fast up into your enemy's faces and like deleting them. It's the the damage type for people that want to hold W. You don't want to retreat. Unbridled aggression to the max. Hunter is really about close-range action, being fluid and dynamic and, and agile, evasive. 
So we're going to give our Hunter a new super. Uh, we call it Gathering Storm, where you summon your arc staff, like twirl it above your head, and then launch it out, and then it will embed into the ground or into like bosses or mini bosses or champions and jolt them. Like a big lightning strike will strike the staff and overcharge it. And while that staff is overcharged, it'll start Tesla coiling little lightning bolts out at nearby enemies. Warlock is kind of this elemental conduit. You are a class that will turn yourself into lightning. You will create things out of lightning. Previously, you know, we had this exotic armor piece called Getaway Artist, where you consume your grenade and it'll make a, a what we call a sentient arc soul that fires faster uh, and, and does more damage as a result. So we decided to roll that into base arc soul behavior. Anytime you are amplified, any arc soul you have from any source will become the supercharged version yeah. that will fire off just rapid fire bolts. Titan's about being this unstoppable freight train. It's about this constant movement. So we gave Titans a new movement option, something that we felt like is going to be competitive in this new environment of air dodges and air slams. That's a new ability called Thruster. And it's all in first person. It's all very much in the heat of the moment. You see it happen. Its whole property is like rush down or get away. It's a movement tool to the max. There's going to be this new melee ability called Thunderclap, which is like an amazing thing where he like charges his fist all super flashy. It's our first ever charge melee, so you hold down the button and as that cocks back and charges up, you'll end up doing more damage and getting a little bit more range. And speaking of like the whole goal of deleting things, I believe in PvP, a full charge is a one-shot kill. It is, oh yeah. It's, it's a little skillful to like pull off because you're going to have to really read your opponent here. The whole through line with Ark is like, it really isn't that complicated. It's move fast, hit hard, and stay alive. What I'm most excited about in Season of Plunder is that this is really a season that has a sense of adventure. Yeah. You're, you're exploring the system, you're looking for pirate treasure, pirate relics. You're seeing the world evolve in a way we haven't done before. I love that with the activities in the season, like we just leaned really hard into the pirate fancies. I love that we have your own catch. I love that you're tracking down buried treasure and then going after the pirate leaders in their caves. The interesting thing about Destiny is we're not just a fantasy game or a sci-fi game, we're kind of a blend of both. And we take inspiration when we say pirates, it's old world pirates that you would see traditionally back in the 1700s and 1800s. We have like a flintlock pistol, we have an exotic fusion rifle that plays different than fusion rifles you've ever seen before. It's just like end to end, just really leaning into that spirit of like the pirate adventure. And let's also make it so that new players coming in can actually jump in and get started. The gift of the Thunder Gods is a starter kit. It's a set of armor, it's a Thunderlord exotic weapon. So jump in, join your friends, set sail, become the captain, and build your crew today in Destiny. Man, it is so awesome seeing King's Fall return to Destiny. Yeah, actually, King's Fall was the first thing I got to work on at Bungie. And I'm thrilled that a whole new generation of Guardians will get to experience this refreshed and reloaded showdown with the Taken King. So, we've shown you Lightfall. We've shown you the new damage type, Strand. We've shown you some of the deeper changes to the game that we're going to be making throughout the next year. But we have one more thing that we are excited to announce today. Destiny is coming to the Epic Game Store today. Epic has been an absolutely fabulous partner to work with. They love Destiny. And we are just huge fans of what they've been doing in the social game space. When we first started working with Epic, we sat down and talked about the impact that their games have had on us. And they had a bunch of the same stories for us. 
They shared stories about playing the Vault of Glass and how much they enjoy the social experiences in Destiny. And I got to talk about the summer of Fortnite Chapter 1, Season 5, when my whole family was laser-focused, taking turns in the island to unlock Drift. In addition to launching all of Destiny 2 on the Epic Games Store today, for the next week, if you download the game on Epic, we will give you the 30th anniversary for free. If you haven't earned your Galahorn yet, or you haven't played the Grasp Dungeon, come to the Epic Game Store and you can jump in for free. We want to welcome all these new Guardians with a celebration. One that stretches a little further than the last city. A few years ago, we shared our plans for the Light and Darkness Saga. This journey, years in the making, is coming to an end. Since we started charting our own course, we've been building this story. Across five years of expansions, since the first pyramid ship emerged in Shadowkeep and we first spoke to the darkness. Then, across Beyond Light, the Witch Queen, and coming up in Lightfall in the final shape, we're building towards a climactic collision between the powers of light and dark. We've also been working on the Destiny engine behind the scenes, preparing our technology and our game to last for many, many years to come. Because Destiny 2 is not going anywhere, and neither are your expansions. We want this story, since we first communed with the darkness on the moon, to be fully playable, start to finish, and we're happy to announce today that we are not planning to sunset any more expansions. We want the Destiny universe to grow, and we're gonna continue to do everything that we can behind the scenes to keep that possible within our game engine. But enough about the distant future. Let's talk about today, the best day all year to jump into Destiny. Yes, because if you're looking to catch up, right now, all expansions are free to play for this entire week, on every platform, for everyone. Right now, Season of Plunder is live, and the Helms get a set of supercharged art gear for anyone looking to catch up on the fun. Destiny is live on the Epic Game Store. You can download it for free, and you can get the 30th anniversary pack as your welcome gift. And if you liked what you saw about the future, right now, pre-orders for Lightfall are live on all platforms, and anyone who purchases the annual pass it's the exotic auto rifle, Quicksilver Storm, today. Today is a perfect day to play Destiny. So we'll see you in game. Cuando vean este glorioso final, vendrán a por nosotros. He leído sobre ellas, los... ¿Cuál es la palabra humana? Piratas. Vengan y observen. Lo que hagan entonces determinará quiénes son.